Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem today. Here's the problem I'm going to be showing you today. We're going with an optimization problem today. I found this problem in a book called Single Variable Calculus Concepts and Context by James Stewart. This problem is actually in the exercises in chapter 4.6 and it's problem number six. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description so you can look into that book if you're interested. But I actually get a lot of problems that I do uh, or some problems that I do from that book on my channel. So um, without further ado, let's jump into it. The problem we're gonna be dealing with today is find the dimensions of a rectangle with area 1000 meters squared, whose perimeter is as small as possible. So like I did with a lot of the other optimization problems, you kinda wanna start by coming up with a couple different equations. First thing you want to think about is what is the thing that you're trying to optimize. So in this case, we're trying to figure out a rectangle whose perimeter is as small as possible. So basically the thing that we're optimizing is the perimeter of the rectangle. So let's think about some rectangle. We'll just say this side is X and this side is Y. If we want the perimeter to be as small as possible, the perimeter is represented by all four of the sides added up, right? If we have a rectangle, we know that opposite sides have the same length. So the perimeter of this rectangle is two X, right? There's two X's and there's two Y's all being added together. So the perimeter is two X plus two Y. So this is the thing that we're trying to optimize. We wanna make that equation as small as possible. But the problem is we have two variables in there. It's kind of challenging to optimize a two variable equation or at least more challenging than a single variable so what we can do is also think about what kind of restrictions we've been given about this rectangle well really the only restriction we know is that its area is 1000 meters squared so if you want to think about how to represent that in terms of this rectangle right here the area of a rectangle is its width times its height right if we multiply x times y that would give us the area of this rectangle. So if we do x times y, we know that the area has to be a thousand. So if we take this equation and we solve it for one of the variables, we can plug that into our function that we're trying to optimize and that'll reduce it down to a single variable. So we could just solve, let's say for y, so we can just divide both sides by x and that tells us y equals 1000 over x. So we can take this and plug it in for y here. So replace our y with 1000 over x. And then now we have a single variable function. So it's just a function of x now. And we can now optimize this using, you know, typical single variable calculus optimization techniques, which basically just needs, means we need to find the critical numbers and we can go from there. So. First of all, we need to find the critical numbers which occur wherever the function's derivative equals zero or wherever the derivative is undefined. So let's think about that first. The first thing we need to do is find the function's derivative. Before we do that though, I'm just gonna rewrite this function to be a little bit simpler to deal with. Obviously the two X is fine, but this piece here, what we can do instead of saying something divided by X, we can bring our x up to the numerator and make it to the negative first power. So two times a thousand would give us 2000. And then we have times x to the negative first instead of divided by x. And that just makes it easier to find the derivative because now we can find the derivative of this term with the power rule instead of using the quotient rule, which we would have to use if it's in a fraction. So the derivative of two x is just gonna be two and then the derivative of 2000 X to the negative first is just gonna be power rule. So we can bring the negative one down in front. So this is actually gonna be minus 2000 times X. And then we wanna lower our power by one. So X to the negative one, negative one minus one is negative two. So this is our derivative. We need to figure out where this equals zero and where it's undefined. Really the only place this is gonna be undefined is well, let's kind of go back to thinking about this the other way again. These two things are equivalent. The only place this will be undefined is when we divide by zero, when our denominator equals zero. 
And you can see the only place that'll happen is if x equals zero. But remember, x represents the length of this side of a rectangle. If x is zero, that doesn't even really make sense because then this rectangle would not be able to have an area of a thousand. It would have an area of zero. It wouldn't be a rectangle. So in the context of this problem, thinking about what our function actually represents, x being zero doesn't even make sense. So we can pretty much ignore that critical number because it won't make a rectangle if x is zero. So what that means is we just need to figure out where our derivative equals zero. So if we just set this whole thing to zero, then we can solve for x and that'll tell us our critical number. So let's do that. First, we can just add this term over to the other side. So that'll give us 2000 over x squared equals two. Then we can multiply both sides by x squared to cancel this x squared with this x squared. And then we can divide both sides by two. So that'll give us 1000 equals x squared because those will cancel. And then we can just square root both sides to cancel the squared over here. So that'll tell us x equals the square root of a thousand. So remember, we were trying to find the dimensions of the rectangle. So we also need to figure out what y was because y is the other dimension of this rectangle. Well, to do that, we already know y equals a thousand over x. So we can just take this x, plug it in here, and that'll tell us what y would be. So doing that, we're going to get y equals a thousand over the square root of a thousand which we actually want to simplify. What you can do is think of 1000 is the same as the square root of 1000 squared, right? Because if you write it like this, the squared and the square root cancel out and you're just left with 1000. But the reason why this is interesting is if we have something squared divided by that thing, the denominator is just going to cancel out with the squared piece. Right? It's essentially, this is the square root of a thousand times the square root of a thousand. One of them will cancel out with the square root of a thousand that's on the denominator. So that just leaves us with y equals the square root of 1000 and x equals the square root of 1000 are the dimensions that make the perimeter of this rectangle as small as possible while maintaining the area of 1000 meters squared. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a, a like on the video and if you could subscribe to my channel, it's a great way to help support the channel so I can keep making more videos like this for you. See you next time.